to people that I'd like to introduce first. We have Tracy Miller here from the Board of Education. Thanks very much for being here. We have some administrators here. We have Mr. Payton, we have Mr. Mickel, and we have Mr. Symbol, who officially takes over as Christmas coordinator tomorrow. Why? <laughs> one. And uh, we have staff members here as well. So thanks everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Hillary Stanford. I'm the superintendent as of a couple weeks ago. And uh, boy, do we have a lot to do and a lot to learn <laughs> in a really short amount of time. So, so thanks for being here tonight and deciding that it was important to come and hear a little bit about what our work has been so far. Um, I will start by telling you that um, one of the biggest purposes of our plan is to make sure that we're balanced as a group. We want to balance what we're hearing from state guidance, uh, from the Illinois Department of Health, from Illinois State Board of Education. We want to make sure that we're focusing on instruction for our kids and for teaching kids. sure that we're talking about our students, the most vulnerable population of kids, um, and what this uh, spring has meant for them, and what we can do for them in the fall. And another very important thing for us is making sure that we're as a group. So that's the purpose of this meeting tonight. If you have many joining us, I should welcome our live stream people, uh, many that are joining us from home and want to hear what the updates are. And we'll say this again at the end. There will be a new email address that gets opened up right at the end of this meeting. Um, where people can send their concerns. So it all goes into one, one spot that can be sent to people that are at that time. Um, one thing that I would like to accomplish tonight is to let you know what we've done to date and to listen to what your concerns are, but I also want to tell you what we won't accomplish to date. We're not going to walk out with a plan that's set in stone, and we're not going to walk out with the answers to all of your questions. I know what you're wearing on your face right now is a, is a big deal. And the thought of having young students wearing those, let alone the older students wearing those all the time, that's, that's a big conversation across the state and across the country right now. And the fact is that that's the new um, concept of wearing the shield is now something that the Department of Public Health is very hesitant to wear at this point, except in very limited circumstances that it's been held up to date. So as, as we're seeing right now, it's, it's a matter of how often things are changing. It's, it's quite awful. So we'll do our best sure that we keep you up to date. Um, so as we go through some of the slides tonight, um, I wanted to tell you that a lot of the work that gets done, one piece of it is the learning piece. There's so many other parts of the school district that we have to do and have to talk to these people. We're dealing with what does face to face kind of look like? How are we going to see kids? What about the health of everybody here, kids and adults? How are we going to screen our kids? Uh, what about the social emotional needs of our kids? What will our school counselors with all of us do. Uh, technology has become a very critical piece uh, over our spring, and we have to make sure that we're able to communicate with all of our families and customers. That continues to be an area of concern. And also, finally, we get the learning community involved, which I've actually been calling the Great School Learning Community. So just a brief update on what's happened. And I know that you've had a chance to see the PowerPoint. The beginning part is exactly what you were sent in the letter. Uh, but for the sake of those who haven't seen it yet, we just wanted to cover it tonight. Oh, and welcome, Dale, board president. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, so the things that we've done so far, we made some pretty quick purchases of some things that were uh, we wanted to make sure that we had in-house. Thermometers, masks for some of those first set of spring students. You might have noticed that I'm standing very slim, free standing, mm -hmm. not sanitizing the face when I moved, walked in. Uh, those will be available at all of our uh, high pressure locations. So those things we did right away. We also started looking right away at what could the possible plan look like. And when we started, probably about a month ago, the thought was, I don't think everything is going to be normal. I sure hope that everything's not going to be totally remote. But you're probably thinking that we're going to land somewhere in the middle with some starters. That's what we're not practiced at. Because we know how to educate kids when they get in front of school. We've dabbled with what happens when they're not with us. And so now we need to really focus our first energies on what can we do? Can you talk yeah. about it? I wondered about that. Okay. Do I need to speak louder? Yeah. Well, this is really loud probably. So that's okay. Probably okay, we'll try to pump up the volume with the teacher voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the plan that we're least comfortable with, sorry, I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm yelling at you. Um, the plan that we're least comfortable with would be a hybrid yeah. model where kids are here sometimes, but not here all the time. So okay. that's where we wanted to focus our energies first because it's going to take the most thinking and the most working together collectively. 
So So the CARES money, you keep on hearing about the CARES Act and school districts will be receiving money. Uh, the money that we are receiving is $115,212 that we can spend. We can backdate purchases back to March when this situation happened, and we can go all the way through as we prepare for this year. So a lot of our purchases will be items that will help with sanitizing. It would be classroom supplies. It would be supplies for sanitizing a large area, such as where we're sitting, sitting right now. Um, you've seen perhaps some handheld sprayers that spray a fine mist. You can sanitize a large area and we've been able to, we were told at first that those would be on back order until probably September or October. Uh, but fortunately something changed and we have ours that are on their way already. So we will have one of those um, pieces of technology available at each of our buildings and also two at the bus garage. So those will be used routinely between lunch periods, um, in classrooms on a regular basis and so on. So that grant has already been uh, approved, so we're able to start spending that, those monies right now. Um, things that we need to consider. Jobs may look a little bit different. It's our goal to make sure that we're using all of our staff and that we use them wisely. Um, we might have different needs than we have had before, so there might need to be some uh, arrangements that are made with the union if we ask people to do something a little bit differently than what they typically um, we also have to consider there is a possibility, even before we start school, that there could be some personnel that are not able to come back to school, and we might need to hire subs in that situation or be creative with how we uh, rearrange our population so we can make sure that we can address all of our needs. And the same thing goes with students. We might have some students. The survey shows a very limited uh, number of respondents today. Uh, that we're saying that they might not be able to come back to school uh, even if we have a hybrid model. So like we've mentioned, we'll just go through some of the what we call the department head areas. For transportation, right now in the phase that we're sitting in for Illinois, we can have 50 students on the bus. Mm -hmm. And if we look at a model where not everybody's coming every single day, we're going to be fine on that bus. Now, fine meaning students are still going to be asked to wear face coverings when they're on there. They're going to be asked to be seated with family members, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes maybe not, but that's the best for our transportation. Um, and then obviously other than that, it would be one per seat. Food service, Tanya and her staff, they can do a, a whiz-bang job if students are learning remotely and they do a fantastic job when students are here. So she's considering, well, what would that look like if some students are here sometime but not all the time? And how can we provide those meals even on those remote days? Looking at the area of nursing, which is going to be probably the most heavily dictated area, I would say. But we need to make sure that we have a routine for how we're going to, what our protocols are for either staff self-assessing their health before they come each morning. We have to make decisions about how we assess students when they walk into the building. We've talked about in our committee work, we've talked about would we have parents do the check? Would we have a bus driver do a check before they get on the bus? Would we do something when they walk in the door? Personally, my current thought um, is we would hope that every parent would help us to the best extent possible by checking their children before they come to school and then we may need to require that we check them when they come in the building as well. Checking at the door of the bus, if they're not close to, we just can't get them home. Okay, So I know it makes more sense to check before they enter the bus if they're riding the bus to school, but it's just not really practical whatsoever. Um, so we have to make sure that we have safe spaces and clean spaces in here. We can keep kids separated if they need to come down to the nurse. We need to have our protocols developed for what if we do send someone home with COVID-like symptoms, what that means for isolation, what about the bubble of people that were in their sphere, what we need to do with that. All of those things will be decided and communicated with you. There's also um, the cleaning and sanitizing protocols. Um, so we're talking about doing that on a daily basis. Some large areas obviously will be done with sprayers, but there's work that will be done in each classroom as well. Um, we're talking about keeping track of what's been done in each room. In the hybrid model that we'll talk about in just a minute, um, the hybrid model has nobody here in the building, no students here in the building on Friday. Uh, so that would be a deep cleaning day. We would have extra time to do that. So these are just some of the considerations that are being made so far. And then we finally get to learning and what that might look like. Social emotional needs. We, needs. we have our social worker for the district here with us today. What is that going to look like? And how can how can we 
we help the teachers uh, get back assimilated into the classroom. Uh, technology is part of the, the learning need that we have. Uh, we had jetpacks that were deployed for people without internet connectivity uh, in the spring. That will be a possibility again. We just have to make sure that we get them to everybody who is in need of them. And as mentioned up there, our most vulnerable populations. There might be a possibility of inviting some students with specialized learning needs to come more than some of the other students. And if that's not, um, if that's not something that uh, is chosen by families to do that in person, we can have the option of more remote meetings with those students that have the greatest needs. So when we got together with our committee, we started kind of chunking our learning needs into a pre-K to six group and then a seven to 12 group because the schedules that happen from seventh grade to 12th grade look a whole lot different than the scheduling, the daily routine of the young children. <coughs> so we land with a model here, a model that's had a lot of discussion behind it. And I think this is kind of where I want to spend a good amount of time tonight, kind of telling you about this and then hearing what your thoughts are about it. With the hybrid model, the thought is to divide our student population. We'll start with the alphabet, but revisions will be made. So we divide our student population into two groups. We'll call one group the blue group, we'll call the other group the silver group. There'll be a third group in just a minute, but basically blue and silver. Blue would attend on Monday and Tuesday, but be dismissed a little bit early. We're looking at a 2.20 dismissal. We'll go back to that in a minute. Silver would attend on Wednesday, Thursday. I see you taking notes. I don't know that we're that close to, to knowing this, but this is just an idea. Um, so silver would attend on Wednesday, Thursday, again, with a, remote, a dismissal a little bit earlier than usual, such as 2.20. No students would be in the building on Friday. Okay, so what happens when all these kiddos leave at 2.20? Well, they go home, but if I'm a teacher, if I'm a Cursey Yagel in my classroom, and I'm working with blue students on that day, I still have silver students who are learning and students who cannot medically come back to school. We'll call them nights, okay? So I still have silver students and night students that I need to tend to. So I need to allow time for that. Plus that helps with the cleaning routines. On the silver days, kind of the same mechanism works. If we have silver students leave a little bit before a typical dismissal time, it leaves a little bit of time for a teacher to tend to any needs of the blue student group and also the night student group, okay? And then on Friday, Friday would be a time where we could touch base with all of those groups. So that's the model that we've come up with. It's kind of what's been ruminating in my mind for a while. And then somebody in a, on a call today with a wide group of superintendents said, you know what, there's a lot of Mondays off at the, in the beginning of the school year. Ah, oh, you're right. <laughs> so, um, so maybe it's not a Monday, Tuesday versus Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe it's a Tuesday, Wednesday versus Thursday, Friday. But the main idea, of what we're looking at is bringing in a half population. So, so what does that do? That lightens the load in the bus, right? That lightens the load when students enter a building, because that's a high traffic area. That lightens the load when students are possibly waiting in a large area before they go to a classroom in the morning, if that even happens still. It lightens the load on the playground. It lightens the load, uh, obviously, at the classroom. It lightens the load at lunchtime, and it also lightens the load of dismissal and buses going home. Is it a perfect answer? No, it's not. Because guess what? That means your kids are here two days a week and not five days a week, right? So um, I will tell you that I, I tend to, I'm finding that I tend to lean on the side of, I, I want to make sure that we're taking care of the health needs. If you're watching news around you, you're seeing that there's some things that are happening and it's, it's not like we are gonna be able to totally avoid the virus coming close to us. But I think if we can start in a smart way um, and then see how things go and hopefully get to a place where then we can take the next step, then I feel like we've done our due diligence. So that's my perspective that I'll throw into the, into the thought. Um, it's also very likely that we could have a spike and we could have many situations. We could have children who were impacted by COVID. We could have teachers that were impacted and not able to come back yet, even if they're not positive, they might have gone home with symptoms and they can't come back yet. We might not have enough substitute teachers that can man those areas. So we might have to go into remote instruction at some point, kind of at a moment's notice. So we wanna make sure that our plan that we have for hybrid, if that's what the board agrees to, if we start with hybrid, we want to make sure that we're working so we can have a smooth transition if we need to go remote, because there's a high possibility. 
So that is blue and silver and have a nice work with that. Well, in my mind, one idea would be if it is a blue day, let's just pretend it's still Monday, Tuesday. If we had a blue day, we could have what we are now calling synchronous learning. We could have synchronous learning opportunities where if I am, uh, we'll go to a high school teacher. If I'm a high school teacher and I have eight periods in my day, blue is typically a Monday group. So I'm gonna have a short meeting with my blue first hour and then my blue second hour, my blue third hour, and my blue fourth hour. Not full class periods, something short, maybe 25, 30 minutes. Then on Tuesday, I'm still gonna tend to blue, but on Tuesday, I'm gonna do blue hours five, six, seven, and eight. That way, if everybody in the whole high school knows what time they're logging in to whichever class, we won't have that overlap, and it will be a little bit more um, structured, I would say, which I think is gonna be a benefit for everybody. That type of model, because of the way things are scheduled, would also work for a seventh grade and an eighth grade situation. Younger than that, we have fewer teachers, right? So four, five, and six, this year there's two sections at each of those grade levels, so two teachers that teach fourth grade, so the students just go between the two, so they can work, they can figure out, okay, who's gonna meet on a blue day, what subjects will we talk about on this day, and on that blue day, and so on, okay? So that's kind of the thought that we could still have the feel of blue and silver. We didn't talk about the Knights. The Knights would have their own specific spot in there. I might be a, a third grade teacher and have no Knights. So I don't have that responsibility, but we might have first grade where we have a whole bunch of Knights. And we might decide, okay, how can we pool our resources and work smarter to answer those needs, okay? So the balance of going in between back and forth, we still want people to have an idea of I'm not totally upended in my planning and my organizing if we have to move back and forth. So we've already talked about that, transitioning between the phases. And one of the things that we've mentioned already very briefly is we have two days of the week that your student would be coming to us. So we want to be very mindful of what those other three days look like. So that's where a lot of child care questions come in. And I don't know that we have answers for those, but I'd like your help in trying to think of what are other resources in the community that we might be able to pull together, what are spaces, what are different things that we could look into. Um, our committee that is in-house is going to meet in this space tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, and we're gonna talk about digging deeper into plans after we hear from you, and then coming up with questions, and then kind of assigning tasks. Okay, who's, who has the most ability to find some potential child care answers, um, and we'll assign those jobs out. So if you have thoughts, let me flash that uh, email address up there, reopening at bluebridge18.org, then maybe you could send some of those ideas our way. Because um, it's our, our goal to try to help with that. Overall, ideally, I would love for this building to be able to come back with all students five days a week. Because I think that's where our biggest child care issues are. Um, but. The board will need to weigh in on that decision, and um, right now it would not be easily, ISB guidance would not be easy to follow, bringing everybody back in. So if we can, my hope is that if we can tolerate uh, a month, maybe two months of this style, of the hybrid style, that we would be able to then take the next step. And this building, in my mind, would be the biggest, the first area of concern with the ages. Okay. So, so what are we gonna do? Keep working. We're gonna balance everything that we hear. There's our email right there, re reopening at blueridge18.org. Um, please send any questions, comments, any ways that you might want to help. Reopening at bluebridge18.org. And next what I'm gonna show you is uh, the results from the survey that we sent out just the other day. It took about a minute for people to take it. We had over 200 people respond. Um, and I'll show you with some graphs real quick. It's like everybody's got what they need from there. Okay, uh, let's see. So we put some working definitions out on the survey because we're talking about these things in house every single day, every single hour, and they become known commodities to us. We wanted to make sure that everybody was answering the survey by based on the same information that we had. So we defined what a hybrid model was. We defined that we were going to be socially distant. We defined that we were going to be wearing a face covering. And we defined that it would be in person for two days and remote for three days. So they knew what they were voting for, so to speak. We also defined what remote was. Um, we provide, you could say it was like the spring, but when we talk about remote, 
we really want to revise what that looked like because now we have the opportunity to play it for it. We want to make it a better experience for everybody. So know that remote doesn't mean what you had in April and May. And then we also felt like it was important to tell you that homeschooling is not the same as remote learning. What happened in the spring, um, I mean, that kind of has its own name, right? But homeschooling is, um, homeschooling is actually when you withdraw your student from Blue Ridge schools. And then we don't send homework for your, your child to do. And we don't give instructional suggestions. That's when you're on your own. So if somebody is interested in homeschooling because they don't want to go with these plans, that's, that's their thought. But it's not that we will continue to send homework for them. Okay? So survey says, um, would you have your student participate in a hybrid model? Overwhelmingly, yes. So these over here are in the same order. It's just they didn't turn out they weren't large enough. You couldn't see the full thing. So they are in order. So overwhelmingly, yes, we would participate in the hybrid model. Now, 206 people responded. Okay, our district is bigger than that. Probably. We got 200. So hopefully, you can help spread the word um, that. This isn't going to be the last survey. More will come out, and the more we hear from people, the better we can gauge what everybody's thoughts are. Um, no, my student can't come because of COVID-19. That's our blue, that's a little bit smaller, and the homeschool is literally, I think, two children. Okay, next survey. Um, we wanted to know what would happen with food. Do you want your child to be fed only while they're here, or do we need to have a plan for how do we feed them when they come to us two days, but then they're home for three days? And so the thought on that, if it was needed, Blue is, yes, I would um, I would appreciate food service on in-person days and remote days. So that's kind of combining the two things. So our thought initially was, we know how to feed you when you're here, and then when you go home, if we know that you're blue and you're leaving on Tuesday afternoon, then you're going to take home three days' worth of, of lunches with you, okay? And hopefully they don't, they don't get eaten on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that could be a possibility. Uh, and then we have a group that's saying no. And that might be that's their normal pattern, or they might be newly saying no thank you to the food service at school. Next was about transportation. We see kind of even bars. So the top one was, yes, I really depend on transportation. I need it. Thank, please and thank you. The middle one was, I'm eligible and we use it, but if you need help, we could drive our own kids. That was very nice to see that many that were able to help out in that way. And then the bottom part was, no thanks, we don't need it. We can almost all take our, temp our child's temperature at home. Um, but I will tell you this, I know it's a hardship. If you're getting kids out the door, um, I don't think it's normal to have 10 extra minutes <laughs> right before you walk out the door. You usually have negative 10 minutes when you're walking out the door. So I know it's a hardship. If we asked you to do it, I'll be honest, if it was me and I was running late and it was a, a chance of, you know, do I either take their temperature or am I 10 minutes late to school, I'm probably going to put my hand on their head and move along, right? right? So if we're doing that, probably there's a whole lot like us that would be doing the same thing. So we would ask you to do your very best with doing your due diligence and doing everything you can to check for those symptoms at home. But then we also feel like for the sake of our staff and for everybody else around us that we need to do that when they walk in. Exactly how is it going to happen? Not sure yet, but we have a lot of thermometers. Um, okay, please describe your internet at home. That made me happy too. Well, of course, we send it out digitally, so. But those who can receive it digitally have internet. What do you know? Um, so a few are using a hotspot or a mobile phone, and then some need some assistance. And we knew that before. And I will say this, if, if you have internet service but it doesn't work well, the jetpack doesn't help that. Okay? Douglas, if I'm saying something wrong, correct me. The, the jetpack is for somebody who does not have internet service. And from what I understand, every request that was made in the spring, everybody who needed a jetpack got a jetpack. Okay? So were there still some issues with connectivity? Yes, because you might have the best signal. That happens to me in my house too. But that's that's not something that the jetpack can actually help. Okay? So there is a possibility something kind of floating around in my mind. If, if somebody needed better connectivity, would we have a place in the school building where a student could come and work, being supervised, being socially distant, even if it wasn't their color day, could they come and do some work if they had a hardship at home? That's a thought. Um, still just ruminating a bit. Okay. Um, so we get to the place where I've talked for a real long time. And now the fan goes off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just like any situation where there's a lot of opinions, we're going to have some that feel very strongly. We talked to the um, 
committee members the other day about this. Some families are going to feel like we're being way undercautious and I can't send my child back because of it. Some are going to feel totally the opposite. You guys are like really over the top with this stuff and I just don't want my child to have anything to do with that. And then there's going to be some in the middle, all right? So as we, as we speak and have um, conversation tonight, I would just ask us all to remain very mindful that the person sitting right next to you could feel very differently. And I want to make sure that I'm respecting all of your thoughts, all of your opinions. Um, my job is to balance, right? To balance what the community needs are. We're not Chicago, right? Uh, but we are right next to a community who's had an outbreak. So we have to we have to be mindful of the guidance and at the same time know who our community members are. So with that, I'll just double check and see if any board members would like to say anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my question is, if we do have a hybrid model and we have teachers who are teaching classes or is it going to be possible for live feed so the ones who are remoting that day would actually get to see the live feed in that classroom or is that something that they're just going to have to do their own work and then the teacher visits with the, those people after like you said after two times there's a lot of legal ramifications that i'm hearing on a lot of my superintendent calls now uh, about doing that um our our thought with what the teachers are doing on the blue days if I'm teaching, I'm going to teach lesson A and lesson B, and I'm going to get pretty far because I have half-sized classes. Ooh, what a dream. <laughs> um, I have half-sized classes, even though they're shortened just a little bit. It's going to be wonderful um, to have that much individualized attention opportunity. So what I teach on Monday and Tuesday, I'm going to prepare them for what they're going to do independently on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. When Silver comes in, Silver is going to get the same lessons, that lesson A, lesson B, when they come in. Um, so it makes sense that they have their own, they're separated into their own days, okay? And then the nights are a little bit more independent in everything that they're doing. Okay? So it's not out of the question, um, but I think having, having that access set up across every place, every classroom that we have, would be a very large undertaking. I think maybe there might be some situations where maybe it was more important in a certain classroom than in another, and we look at that when we get there. Anything else, any other admin or board member questions or comments before we? I think for me, I think for me, and those of you that don't know me, my kids are grown, so I work with you by, so I deal with a lot bigger kids, but having a seven year old this summer has made the work things a little different for her. I like the thinking I'm hearing. My concern would be, and I think hopefully our staff would think of that, that some of the kids we need to divide up. There are definitely some kids at certain ages where you have that one friend, and it's like going through all of this is hard enough. So hopefully we can. I know we can't like you see you can't pick your teacher, you can't do all that. But I'm hoping that for some of those students, that it would be really rough to come and you just happen to call, and all those little girls that you usually have, like not any of them are blue and you're blue. I mean, that to me would be really rough for some of these kids because the social and emotional part. I definitely, the learning is important, but like I always think of that, especially for girls. Like little girls are really emotional anyway, so those kind of things. Hopefully, we can kind of, in some ways, kind of be like you know, recognizing that that's also an important part of them to get them from school and have at least that one person. Mm -hmm. And I think that with our size, that's an yeah. advantage that we can yeah. look mm -hmm. at those lists and, and do what's right in that way. And I think, um, I think Mr. Payton already had teachers that were kind of being mindful of that and making tentative lists just because you have to get started sometime, right? And, yeah, most of our staff probably know, like, you know, that being help, mm -hmm. you know, this student or a different little boy, you know, someone yeah. that makes them feel a little more comfortable. So. We, we also thought about there could be households with um, multiple last names and they could necessarily be, they could automatically be split across alphabets, but it would be better for them to be together. So. When an older sibling is home, a younger sibling is also home. So that's definitely a consideration that would be made. We'll, we'll start with the with the division, um, just kind of in a orderly manner, and then make the revisions after that. Yes. But even at like, I, I, I semi agree with you on that aspect. But then, I mean, if you're if you're going to go through the classroom, and you're going to say, okay, well, this five gets along really well, and then these three, they're troublemakers, right. and this. How are you differentiating between? The classrooms then I mean are we gonna put everybody that gets along with one classroom and everybody that doesn't in another no but I think I think the teachers know the student body because of our size especially at this, these younger levels they know the kids and I think they're okay. very capable of, of making good choices and 
Would it be everybody's best buddy in the same group? Not necessarily, but I, I think there's some consideration, some common sense that can be used there too. Um, and on that, I'm thinking of my daughter who's a freshman, and the eighth graders who are going on to high school as a whole new school. The teachers don't know them, you know. And I know high school is different than middle school and junior high and grade school in terms of the classes and how it's set up with the DTs, etc. But from her point of view, they don't know her. So that whole balancing for her is very intimidating because she knows that her good friends are in the first part of the alphabet. And, and, and I realized, having talked to her about this, that that is a huge concern emotionally. And she's 14, you know, so, um, and I'm not saying that she should be placed with her friends, but I do think that is a very important consideration for all this too, because especially, I'm thinking about these eighth grade girls, and specifically girls, I mean, I don't think boys really care, but maybe they do. Um, but I'm just, I know that this class, and this is a whole new experience for them, so I'm concerned about that. Yeah, I, I hear that. I, I know there's a lot more uh, movement mm -hmm. at the height from seven through 12, because they're changing classes every so many minutes. They're not with the same group right. the entire day, but if, if you're feeling isolated in that whole color versus the other color, mm -hmm. then that's that's tough. And those are, like I said, I, I I do believe that we're small in size and we yeah. can use that for our advantage uh, when it's appropriate. So, I, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that. Um, sorry, that. Uh, my household. I work seven thirty, four thirty. So I was never never home i know my kids are older i know i'm a freshman and a senior <laughs> so i know they're older but the emotional aspect for my kids of not being here was very very difficult mm -hmm. and we struggled <laughs> the end of last year only being two months have very very high anxiety and i we barely made it through the school year <laughs> so i have very very high anxiety about even the hybrid <laughs> yes. and I know you can't help it I, I really honestly sure. know you can't help it sure. but even the hybrid piece for my family is really <laughs> is really going to be difficult my mm -hmm. my daughter especially is yeah. a freshman and she yeah. ha already has anxiety issues about a lot of things yeah, I'm getting. and mm -hmm. this is <laughs> send this over I, I think that <laughs> I think that one of the things let's talk about synchronous versus asynchronous for a minute again um, I happen to be uh, kind of like a checkpoint person for a high school student uh, in March, April, and May. And I know that, so I got added to their Google Classroom so I could see what teachers were sending out. And I know that there wasn't a lot of organization because of the nature of everything being so at the last minute. There wasn't a lot of organization with this teacher is going to meet with you at this time and this teacher is going to meet with you at that time and so on. It was, here's your work turn it in when you're done, mm -hmm. right? Which is what was appropriate at the time. There's there's no, I'm not saying anything negative about the way it happened, but now that we have an opportunity to plan, I think for even those remote days, um, when we can have those synchronous meetings set up, at Friday when we can have synchronous meetings set up, if we had to go full remote, if we could have those synchronous meetings set up when they know that they have an expectation that I'm gonna be with Mr. Anton at eight o'clock, I'm gonna be with the next teacher at 8.45, we're hoping that that brings some consistency, that somebody who um, has a high level of stress about being all on their own at home, hopefully they would feel a little bit more comfort, even if we can't do exactly what we want, have everybody here every day, hopefully that's at least a step in the right direction. Because I, I think we all, we all agree with that feel. Yes, go ahead. Um, I just wanna say as a parent, my son, um, he's going into fourth grade, and I'm on the lucky side because academically he's he does very very well, um, but I see I honestly don't see any benefits at all to remote learning, and I know that that's something you know that we we just have to do. Um, but I feel for the academically like challenged children, I know that it has to be like especially for parents just heartbreaking, like you said. Um, I can't, I just can't imagine having a child that struggles and struggles and struggles. My son, like you said, he, he has huge anxiety and already um, 
his anxiety gets bad enough that he develops tics. So it's already begun, you know, is he coming, going back to school? Is he going back to school? And so we've talked a little bit about it. And um, so I've let him know that we're, you know, he, hopefully we're gonna go back in just a couple days. And so he's developed a new tick because he's not going back full time. But I'm hoping as, you know, as soon as possible, you know, maybe, I just don't feel that two days going back to school is is very, you know, is, is gonna be beneficial, honestly, for a lot of students. And I'm hoping that, you know, as soon as possible, we can do more than that. Um, like I said, you know, I'm grateful for, for my son that he can do, you know, all this work on the computer and he doesn't need help because I, I teach at a private school and so I'm not at home when he's doing his homework and he's, you know, learning, you know, so he knows to go to his meetings at 9 a.m. He's very independent. If I had a child that wasn't and, and they're at the sitters, I don't know what I would do. And I feel for those parents that don't. Um, but on that aspect also, I know a lot of parents are very worried about wearing masks, their children. And where I teach, I teach three-year-olds and all of our three-year-olds wear masks. And I just want to let everyone know they they are, they do wonderful wearing their masks. <laughs> and they're three. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. and they wear them hear. they wear them all day aside for lunch and outdoors. And I just know that if a three year old can wear it and they're uncomfortable, that literally everyone yeah. probably can wear it, you know, kindergarten through twelfth grade. I know that they probably don't want to, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Well but you know, I just worry as a parent with the social and you know the emotional, definitely, and I and I do worry about you know children that definitely have you know the academic challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. About it just scares me. Remote learning scares me a lot because I just think children need the face-to-face -face teacher as much as possible. I'm not disagreeing at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go ahead. I'm trying to take this off. I'm sorry for a second. I've got no distance, right? <laughs> I completely agree with you. I mean, Wade, my son, he's going into second grade, and he is phenomenal at wearing a mask when we have to go out. So I have no problems with that going into play. But the socialization and the remote learning, I mean, I know that when this pandemic started, everybody got hit like by the bra side. And so you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, what are we supposed to do? And luckily for my family, I was deemed essential, my husband was essential, and I was able to work from home. But the ability to keep the attention of my six-year-old with YouTube and the teachers, I got they did a phenomenal job. But the stress level of the remote learning, even on my even on my son, was just astronomical. And I know that we're trying to be proactive and make these decisions that we can to be, you know, the best for our, you know, our faculty and our students. But what's the difference of them being here for two days and then going to a daycare? And now we're going to put this remote learning on a daycare provider who's now going to raise their raise their rates. So now they got to teach these kids. So now you have the families that are dealing with more, you know, economic impact. And then the stress of coming home, like some daycares may not do it. So then you're going to come home after work and then you're going to have to spend how many hours with your child and then fight with them because, you know, you're the parent. <laughs> they all argue with you. Like, oh, I don't want to do it. Well, you're going to do it. You know? My children don't. <laughs> <laughs> but the struggle is real on that. And I understand that I commend the school on everything that you guys are putting together. And I know that it's stressful. And it's stressful on everyone. But I don't see the difference in them coming to school for two days and wearing masks. And then all of a sudden, we're going to send them to daycare where they're not going to wear masks. They're going to have other kids from other regions and other families, and some are state, you know, licensed, some are not. So they're not going to check that. I feel like we may have a bigger increase in COVID, you know, as far as testing positive with the children going into daycare more days a week. You have so many dual income families that can't afford to stay home. And so the question already was when we had our um, Schneider staff together. Is, is there a way, can can you find a way in your classroom to have the full enrollment there mm -hmm. and to keep them away from each other? And <laughs> the answer was we, we just, we don't see how that's possible to abide by those rules at this time. Which, yeah, I, I think we all want the same thing. Yeah. We all have that same anxiety about, 
you know, wanting it to be best for kids and for families, and, and how do you make that happen right away? What's well, the educational side of the students as well? I mean, no offense, I am not no rock star. My kid did not <laughs> do that great even the spring, <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be the first one to admit it, and that's my biggest concern with three days of remote learning. You know, we're going to do our due diligence. We're going to do everything we possibly can because I want my son to thrive. I want him to have the best education. But dear Lord, that kid fights with him. <laughs> and I think one thing we have to we have to remember, and there's some teachers in here too that can understand. There were some teachers that never walked away from the computer. They were answering questions at 6 p.m. at 10 p.m. They're telling me my kids are turning things at one, in at 1 a.m. and I'm asking them, well, why why do you know that? <laughs> they feel like they can't they can't walk away. They can't look away, right? Because they care about your kids so much. They want to be there 24 seven. Well, guess what? You can't. It's not physically. It, well, it's physically possible. It's not emotionally mm -hmm. possible to continue that for any length of time. It's not good for anybody. At some point, you have to be done. Mm -hmm. If a child, wants, if a high school kid wants to be up at 12 o'clock at night and, and doing their homework, more power to them. But you as teacher, don't look at it. Don't look at it till it's your time, right? Mm -hmm. But we also, along the same lines, we have to remember that when it is a remote learning situation, if, if we're in that situation where that's our best answer, then the remote learning does not have the same level of expectation as in-person learning does nor does it have the same level that in-person will when we come back, whatever it looks like. Everybody's gonna be at a different level. Mm -hmm. I, we worked with, one of our buildings worked with a, um, like a social emotional learning coach uh, through the months of April and May. And she kept on reminding us, was it 75% that she said? Mm -hmm. you're, you're at a max capacity of 75%. So we all have to understand, kids, adults, everybody, families, we can't have those high expectations on ourselves. It's not realistic. We have to realize that everybody's in a situation where your productivity expectation has to be lower. Do we like that? No. Is it perfect? No. But you have to kind of hit the release valve at some point. So if she has a question, and I don't want to. Would you like to go? <laughs> she raised her hand like three times. I'm just a quiet person, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my son's going to be a senior, and so that's a, and what's interesting to me is we have talked a little bit to some parents, and I, and I totally understand. All of my kids, most of my kids, well, I had a daughter who's older, struggled slightly in school, and I actually found for Victor, with his attention situation, he was better at home, because lesson, he could, he could pause Gina. <laughs> and, and process and, and then catch up. So I, I think that I just want to kind of reiterate. So. <laughs> I'm a math teacher, so it's just fine. <laughs> well, and yeah. and so I, I and I want to reiterate kind of what you said. I didn't say to him, "You have to be up and ready to go at eight twenty because that's when school starts." He slept, mm -hmm. and then if he did an hour or 45 minutes or an hour and 50 minutes, and then he wanted to play video games for it, or, I did it because it is a different environment. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't the same as school, and, and, and I'm not, you know, everything you guys said, I understand your concern. I'm just trying to encourage you to, to, to understand that you have to look at it differently, and it could be beneficial. Second part, though, is Victor also takes a lot of Woods classes. And um, that's hands on. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how that's going to look. He still has a project sitting there that's not done mm -hmm. from last semester. Is there any consideration on since they're older, they can drive in more days? Or I talked to Mr. Senek. I think it was either yesterday or today, um, and we talked about. He said I have a lot of seniors and kids who have graduated also that have yes. hundreds of dollars of uh, invested yes. in a project mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I do believe that there's a way to, I mean, once we can be in a space with 50 people, then yes, I think there's absolutely a way that we can get some of those projects done. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Seneca has already met with, um, I believe it's the city manager, to talk about the garage that they'll mm -hmm. be building, and that's a go as well. So, okay. we're, we're so trying he to, may be here four days, I mean, all the days a week, you think? Two, or it could that. be two, we'll call them full days, even though it would be a 220 dismissal. Yeah. And maybe coming back if he's, if he's able to, if he's a driver, yeah. coming back for that. We've also talked about, we haven't talked anything about athletics and activities. Mm -hmm. that's, well, that's another the, that's yeah. another concern. I just so, mentioned he's a senior, right? And he's a soccer player, so that's the next one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what if, what if I'm a, a soccer player, and I'm a blue group, and I have to be at practice? 
Well, if I'm a senior and I can drive, yippee, good for me. But if I'm not a senior, if I'm a seventh or eighth grade student and it's not my day, well, we've talked about running a shuttle bus That's to fun. those who need transportation to come in after school. Yeah. But then the whole thought is if you're trying to keep less people from commingling, and then why is sports more important? So why can we commingle for sports? So do we need to do some consideration for blue versus silver by sport? Well, I mean, the list just keeps going on and on, right? So. We'll, we'll continue to take your suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am very excited about my daughter coming back to school today. <laughs> she, I hope I'm going to tell you, the hardest two months of my life. We are both proud daily. And thank goodness, Mrs. Bumble, she was awesome. She gave Bella her home phone number, her cell phone number, and they texted back and forth. But my husband and I both never left our jobs. So I'm very thankful that my boss lets me bring her to work with me, but still it's kind of hard to like make her do her homework right. while I'm sitting here trying to get my work done. Right. So I just wanted to, I just really, really, really am relying on these two days. I mean, two days is better than nothing right exactly. now. So yeah. Thank you. And she was pretty excited when she gets to come back to school for two days. She's a very social butterfly, so it's been kind of hard for her because she's her, well, her brothers are older. One just left for the Marines and he's in boot camp right now, so that's been hard on her, and she's ready to get back to school around yeah. Yeah. kids her age. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Oh, back. Thank you. Yeah, okay. in the back. Um, <laughs> so I have lots of questions, but I'm just going to start with two. Okay. Uh, and you don't have to like go into depth, and maybe these are still in the works. I'm sure all things are all in the works. Mm -hmm. But my first question is, does a different phase change? You have phase three, four, five, and I wasn't sure what that was defined by it, if that's our name or if that's the state health thing. So my question is, if something changes by the rules, does it change our attendance days? That would be my first question. Meaning, would we at some point, like now we go hybrid and then after the second semester we go to full, you know, is that a possibility? Absolutely, it's okay. a possibility. And then my second thing is, if for some reason someone, let's say an absence class, is tested positive, is it available for us at some point to say, now I want her to be home all the time? Will that count still as, I don't know how I'm saying this, if the school goes with hybrid learning and COVID is found to be in a teacher or a student in her space, at some point can I as a parent say, now for two weeks I wanted to do remote learning. I don't know. We've, we've talked a little bit about that. We've talked more about um, when we have to, as a school, make that decision because right. we either run out of teachers and we can't get enough subs or we've had enough of the virus spread throughout a certain area that we have to shut down because the public health department right. is telling us to. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've really gotten to, oh, I'm a parent and I just, I feel like I need to make that decision. If it was really because of a health reason, I think we'd be having that conversation together. Okay. More than just somebody yeah. saying, oh, I changed my mind. Yeah. One thing we did talk about was if you are assigned to blue and you happen to have a dentist appointment on Tuesday, uh, we're not going to let you come in on silver days just because, because that would just be woo, everything all over the place, right? So, um, so once you're in your color category, we've done our revising, then we'd like you to stay there. Would we like would we like to move out of hybrid into something else uh, in, a, in a positive direction? Yes. <laughs> might we have to move in the remote direction? We might have to be poised to right. do all of that. Okay. Um, and. Do we need to look at? I, I think it's a fair question to ask. What if I what if I want to change my mind because it's just and something we my family would totally changed. be based on a medical. I mean, my husband has issues. I mean, he has issues. He has issues, <laughs> medical issues that is kind of defining what we do and don't do. So that would be that's my question specifically. And I I'm not just saying that for me personally. I mean, for other people, is that an option? Yeah, I think I think we have to be uh, open to that. I so kind of wondered years. that too, where I'm kind of the opposite, where I am a certified teacher, I'm running an in-home daycare, and my daughter's supposed to be starting kindergarten. <laughs> so we're kind of like, do I just keep her at home and do the remote learning for now, and kind of see how things go, and then if it's like, hey, we're going to have the kids come back five days, can I say, okay, now I'm ready to send her. 
is yeah. there you know going to be kind of that flexibility that's, that's, that's a great question i see no takers <laughs> i think that's a very good question i just i know i'm in a unique situation mm -hmm. but it kind of you know yeah if other people are like yeah things are getting i don't want my kids here right now mm -hmm. or but yeah. yeah, just that flexibility. And my, my first thought is, if there's a medical reason behind it, I don't see how we can say no. <laughs> uh, if it was a personal preference, I think maybe there could be a, kind of like a come in, come out date, like end of the quarter, end of the semester. Yeah. That, that's my first thought. I'm not saying that's an answer, that's just a possibility. Yeah. I just want to follow up on what Annette said, because she was talking about the phases from the governor. Uh -huh. So what we're phase four now. Yes. So phase five, I mean, we, I mean, do we know what that looks like? But would that be the point when we would say, now we're making a change? That's, well, or I'll just give you my, personal, I'll give you my well. personal opinion. Phase five, they say, is when we have the vaccine. So I think that's kind of far away. Definitely. My guess, um, and phase three would be, we really have to cut our numbers down. That's probably a, a a forced right. remote either by the state telling us they're forcing remote for everybody or just because we, we can't function with 13 kids on the bus at a time right so um so phase four is probably where we're going to live the majority of our, our time i would hope um and i do believe that like anything you're going to see some pressure um, with the governor you're going to see some pressure with uh, state board of education that i think maybe after some time they may make some revisions to phase four and maybe there's a 4a and a 4b and maybe we get to do a little bit more but even we, before we, we, we can go by our zones instead of let it stick together you know what i'm saying like Right, that could happen. It could happen by our, our geographic location. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that I was on a call with uh, many superintendents this morning, and there's really a split between hybrid and bringing everybody in and just hoping for the best. Kind of by the end of our call, a lot of the people that were, we're just going to bring them all in and hope for the best were saying, oh, I think maybe we need to have a hybrid plan out there because it just, it seems like you have to prepare that way. So a while ago you said hybrid, you were thinking like one to two months, but the more that you speak about it, I'm thinking it sounds a little bit longer than one to two months. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I have no idea. I, in my mind, in my own mind, to make me happy, <laughs> and we could get in and we could say, yes, we did that successfully, and let's let's go further. And let's try to find a way that we can so follow So we're the waiting rules. on the state board to let you guys know that we can go, or we're waiting on the phase to change? Um, Who are we waiting on, I guess? Or, or is it who's deciding when yeah. you can change? Is that's what I'm also asking a, you. That's a good question. Um, because the Illinois State Board of Ed is giving us guidance, right? strong guidance, but it's not right. a law. The one thing that they say we have to do is the, the face covering, right. okay? But everything else is a suggestion. Right. And just like they say, you can't have more than 50 people in a space. Right. Well, then they have to define what the word space is. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes. um, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to use common sense when we're putting these plans together. That's why I asked that we're sitting right here, the, the kindergarten to third grade team. Can you feel like the guidance that you're hearing and the size of your classroom and the full enrollment, knowing that this may or may not be easy, do you feel like you can have everybody in your classroom and be meeting what the suggestion, the, the recommendation is for us? And that's when they said no. We don't we don't feel like we're following the, the spirit of the law. The, the teachers and the principal, is that who you ask those when I'm asking? Or I mean, is that who you asked when you just said, said that? Yes, that's where the conversation was. I'm not saying that's the final decision maker. That's our board because they have to approve the plan that we do. So the, the teachers, the, the teachers, and then that agreed with the the hybrid and stuff for now, or the or the remote, whatever you choose. Kind of is the plan that they came up with, right? Yes, we all we presented some ideas to them because administrators have met first. We presented ideas to them. We talked back and forth a little bit, mm -hmm. and we said we felt like that was the best plan that we could conceive. Um, I know that Muhammad was looking at uh, a plan where um, K through five, pre-K through five, was coming back for a morning shift and an afternoon shift. I feel like by the time you transport kids out and bring a new batch in, even though they're not eating, they probably wouldn't eat in the building, mm -hmm. but bringing a batch home and bringing a new batch in, there's not that much time in the day. A school day is really pretty quick. By the time you got a group in and got them out and got the next group in, I. I 
I, I don't know. We, we could look at that. You know, I know the Illinois School Board Association, their, their guidelines, they only give you the guidelines. You uh -huh. have to do these things, but they won't tell you how to do it. Right. And they said the same thing with the remote learning. They just tell you, you got to have a plan. You develop your own plan. <laughs> and, and so the thing is, I want us to caution us that we don't compare ourselves to other districts uh, because we realize that there's different size districts out there. They have different resources. They have different faculty, members of faculty. They have facilities that are a lot larger. So we may read, and they've already read the paper, Muhammad, how the school districts in Champaign are going to be utilizing what they're talking about. How they're going to say, why can't we do that? Mm -hmm. And well, we can't because we don't have that many buildings, that large rooms that we can actually split up and get the six foot mm -hmm. space you need between the kids. I mean, I was thinking along the line is if you know we have volunteer parents come in. I, I know a long time since we had kids in the down in the lower grades, but. Um, I mean, I mean, my wife don't come in and help it out the teacher. Uh, you may have more volunteers that would be willing to step up and say, if we do come back, you know, full blow, 100%, I'd be willing to volunteer two days a week to come in and help monitor, make, yes. make sure the kids are wearing their masks, help sanitize and get them to their stuff. If it means us seeing if there's availability to hire more aides to help out, but the problem is, the more people have in the room, then right. yeah. you're yeah. defeating the numbers that you're allowed to have in the room. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the, the, the best answer is at the moment. And I didn't want to open a can of worms, but you've already done that by saying. <laughs> yeah. the, the nice thing is, is that uh, Dr. Stanford is a part of the, she's actually in the Lincoln division. And if she was going to meet with her fellow superintendents, it would be with all the ones down in Springfield. And when you get down to Springfield, you're talking about big schools. Mm -hmm. So their whole philosophy and mindset is a little different. And, but since we're so close, the division over in the Champaign area, they actually meet the superintendents they normally would meet in Champaign. And so Susan Wilson before and now Dr. Stanford can actually be a part of that group. And it's more of, you know, the districts, some of the districts are more our size. So it's really good to be able to, you know, have a sounding board with other districts your your size and find out okay how are they doing what's what's Fisher gonna do how's Gibson City gonna do it you know how's Clinton gonna do it I think everybody's waiting to see how everybody else is gonna do it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really honestly believe like Dr. Stanford for saying I think when we start back to school even with a hybrid model that you're gonna see within it, it takes about two weeks they say once you get around you're gonna see the you know the symptoms but I would say within, by the first semester being over, they're gonna find out, okay, hey, this is working out. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can move on. But I think they can probably see a spike. And if the spike happens and we can contain it a little bit more, then maybe it's short-lived for us and then we can move on to where we wanna be a little bit faster. So I'm gonna start and go this way. Lindsay. Oh. So I'm a parent right now. <laughs> um, so as a parent, I can just tell you that daycare in this community is going to be extremely hard because I don't have the, I mean, I was me as a teacher working Monday through Thursday, so we've already had this discussion with Amy and I, and I'm sure a lot of us that have little kids um, that aren't old enough to watch other little kids. <laughs> and so the outcry for um, child care because of this model, and I'm not saying it's bad, model, I'm just saying the outcry for childcare is going to be huge. And I know we've talked about and things have gone through my mind of to what um, high schoolers could watch littler kids and earn money, but that's not gonna work when they have to do school too. You know, um, plus the daycare providers are, you know, have age four nine children. They're not gonna be able to get so and so on at nine o'clock so and so on at eight o'clock and so and so on at three o'clock or whatever for their classroom meeting. Um, and it was as a teacher with children <laughs> that are in kindergarten last year and in fourth grade and one who is um, very challenging, it was not, it was not easy at all. <laughs> I cried and pulled my hair out just like everybody else and I thought, 
I'm a teacher, I should be able to do this. No, I can't. <laughs> I cannot teach fourth grade in kindergarten, <laughs> and I cannot do it while I'm teaching everybody else's kids. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be extremely hard. Um, you don't know where the child care is going to come from. It's, it's very hard to find child care anyway, yes. mm -hmm. let alone when everybody's going to need it. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it should go full time, but I also worry about the health concern. Mm -hmm. So I just don't know where I'm at with it, but I just want to let you know, I've already called daycare because I didn't have daycare last year, because I didn't have to. And I have called three, and luckily I have a summer care one who says, okay, we will make this work. Um, but the other two I called are full and have no kids. And that's just two, and I know there's not many more out there. And I, I am not, I don't have the resources in this area right. to, to know so that's definitely a, an that's ask from huge, me to you huge. if there's if there's anything that you know there's way you know, I thought of huge. churches and the, you know spaces that we could use but you need somebody to, to take care of so. I have some openings Oh, I, oh, you have some openings. There you go. We'll <laughs> <laughs> um, be full before you walk out. Yeah. Also, my other one other question, I have one more, is um, <laughs> we only have two sections of four, five, and six, correct? Yes. What do we have of K, one, two, three? Two, three, two, two, of K, three, three. three. Okay. Have we thought, and it's just throwing it out there, it's an expensive venture, but our numbers are. 2020 in a classroom because we have two sections. If we were three sections, would we have 13, 13, and 13 in a classroom? I don't know. You know what I mean? We have two sections because we don't, because they're small. Mm -hmm. But if we had a 30 section, then we would only have a small number in each room. And we do have rooms. I don't have Christmas. I'm not starting anything. I'm just saying. Hiring <laughs> <laughs> you know, higher and higher professionals. You know, school yeah. board, money, money. Right. We're talking about hiring paraprofessionals or help. What about I other can't. teachers? If we have <laughs> other rooms, I don't know if that's another option. I don't know. What is okay, I'm not a teacher right now. Okay, <laughs> I, I am. I'm both because I can do that right now. Okay, so Lindsay, genius. But not for fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. No, because the problem it sounds like is here, right? Like this is the child care problem. This is the kids won't keep their mask on problem. My kid, this is where I'm a parent. My little baby is going to be in kindergarten this year. And I was just sitting watching Mrs. Moke teach um, swim lessons, which if you have ever seen that lady teach swim lessons, yeah. wow, she's amazing. And I can just imagine what she's like in the classroom. <laughs> Mr. Payton, she's got an excellent on her evaluation. Don't even bother. <laughs> okay, but I was thinking, how is Sunny going to come to kindergarten for two days a week and learn those procedures and learn those routines and get used to being in this building full time? and then go back to grandma's house for three days, and then have a weekend, and then come back to school and remember those procedures again. Whoa. But we do have extra buildings, extra rooms at our building. And so I know you don't hear necessarily. It's crazy, but what if we shifted third grade over to our building? Or what if we shifted? Oh, I'm doing it! I'm doing it! We do sign our contracts for the show. She's a parent! Seriously, though, because we have extra rooms. And isn't it like if we could somehow figure out how we could shrink the population here at Schneider and shift them? I mean, Lindsay's talking 13, 13, 13, but if we have 20 fourth graders who can wear their masks, and a fourth grade teacher, if we had 12 kindergartners and a new kindergarten teacher, like couldn't, I don't know. Dale, you've got the money bags. <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm just, I mean, if we want to think outside of the box and if we want to think how can we get 
our most vulnerable vulnerable population, which to me is the littles. Because we know, like statistically, that if we don't reach those kids in this early elementary stage, if they don't get the knowledge of how school works, if they don't get that baseline of all of that information, then they are going to struggle when they come to me at seventh grade, no matter how great we are, and we're pretty great. <laughs> it seems to me that if we could ease that for K-2-3, can we think outside of the box and find a way to utilize some space and somehow, like, maybe not even hire a full teacher. I know that is like a lot of money to say, hey, we're gonna hire six new teachers. I don't even know where we're gonna find six new right. teachers. Right. Yeah. But if we could somehow work it so like, teacher instructs for a while, and then teacher goes and instructs in this different classroom for a while, we have an aide here monitoring them as they do center work or whatever. I don't know. Half teacher, half mom, right here. <laughs> it's better than the saran wrap idea I had. <laughs> yes, it is better than that. <laughs> Just saying, I got tons of them. I don't want to hear that one. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi. I have a question about the hybrid learning uh, with the setting it up for two days in a row. And then um, I'm just thinking one as a parent and as a teacher myself. We're basically then having our kids come to school two days in a row. Then we're gonna have three days of home remote learning and then the weekend. So basically it's five days at home. Um, I guess I'm looking at this mainly as a teacher fact. We have five days at home with those kiddos and then like they have to come back then on that Monday or that Wednesday. And I'm just thinking of the teacher then having to like, you know, like after a holiday, you know, the kids come back and they're all like hyper and they don't know what's going on. Or the teacher's going to have to like fight that every time. Um, and I'm sure you've looked at it. Is there a reason why we're not maybe doing like blue group on Monday and Wednesday and silver group on Tuesday and Thursday? So then it's still more of a routine for the kids that they know every other day I'm going to school. Um, and then they still kind of get a, a better routine, I guess I could say. I, I have a seventh grader. I also have one that'll be in second grade and possibly a pre k but probably not to be honest with you because she's just sassy. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure you, our teachers here are awesome and they've looked at that, but I just was curious if that's something they've looked at as doing like an every other day instead of two days in a row. That was actually the first um, iteration of the hybrid model. And then for the sake of the cleaning procedures, we right. felt like having the same two days in a row, same group two days in a row, would be better hygiene wise. Um, we at first, also looked at Wednesday being a day where the deep cleaning would happen and then bring back a Thursday, Friday group. But then you have the cleaning over the weekend that's gonna to have to happen. So there's, yes, that's a, that's definitely a possibility to go back and revisit. And like I told you, I heard today with the whole Monday holiday issue, you know, that's something to consider as well. I do um, appreciate, sorry, the two full days instead of doing us shipping the kids in half day and then yes. sending them home and have the other kids. Cause that's just not enough turnaround to clean. I mean, literally, you're going to have teachers that are already copying, eating, and going to the bathroom in that 30 minute lunch period, you now with four off flights. And so I appreciate you not doing that. Go ahead. Well, I guess I was going to completely contradict what Chloe just nope. said. Because <laughs> totally fine. I, I guess my thought is like, can you walk us through the thought process of not having half and half? Because currently, I'm thinking teacher mode right now. And I would love to be able to see every single one of my kids every single day. Like, honestly, even if it was for 25 minutes instead of my usual 44. Okay, 88. But um, I, I would love that. And so if you could talk us through that process of how you settled on this one as being the best, I would, I would love to hear. Yeah, so the half and half, though, we'll call it morning and afternoon group. Um, your, your kids that are coming in, you have, we have to remember from the perspective of when, when kids come in and they're in our seats, that's not the only time that they're learning, right? So they're learning at the, they're given work that they're supposed to do outside of that. So then you're also going to be, in addition to taking care of the morning group and the afternoon group, you're going to have to answer all those remote questions at the same time. So that shortens your day. So if we went down to a five hour day, by the time you get kids in and try to see a group and rotate through, 
the, the time to me would be so short. I don't know. And then you have to have the dismissal procedures and the entry procedures, and everything has to be cleaned in between. I, I don't know that there's the manpower to do all of that and see the kids for enough of a length of time to make it worth our while. But I, I mean, we can look at it again. It's well, something that we I heard about after we met the last time. Okay. I guess in, in my thought, it would be more like a regular school situation. So I would teach those kids for, for three hours, you know, or I would see them and I would give them that lesson and I would give them the homework. And so it would be kind of just like a regular day because when they go home and do their homework, they, they try and they can send me an email, but I don't necessarily check it. As so, opposed to like the remote learning where that's my task is to check my email and respond to those. So how many, pretend like you're not a blocked teacher. Yeah. So how many how many classes is a Megan James gonna see each day? Four, six, six. She doesn't need the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I would be willing to give up my block ELA time, mm -hmm. but I mean, that's... I can't believe you just said that out loud. Well, for <laughs> right now, <laughs> I'm running it up. <laughs> Not for every day, but to try to see my kids every single day, I would do that, but next year, no. I'm not opposed to looking at that. I'd like to see it on paper to see yeah. how many minutes they're actually in. Mm -hmm. if, if we're with a group for 20 minutes, is it really going to be, can we get any work done? Yeah. Could we explore the possibility of trying a block schedule then so instead of Megan seeing all six of her classes maybe she sees half of them on Monday for an extended period of time but then those kids are still coming to school on Tuesday but they're seeing their other teachers so they're seeing Jenny Avery and they're seeing you know what I mean I, I talked about that with Leslie Whitehouse at the high school and let me see if I can recall um, that that's an initial thought that I had like many months ago then it was a great idea and <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> um, yeah but I'm not able to, to pull in my brain exactly why it didn't work at that point okay um, when, if I can just interject one of the hang-ups for us some of the districts that are looking at that mm -hmm. what they're doing to make that work is they're cutting specials mm -hmm. yeah. and, what and do you do with those we've teachers? also committed to keeping all of our staff using all their staff mm -hmm. and so um, we're not we don't want to just cut stuff sure. out, mm -hmm. you know but if you only have them for two and a half hours a day mm -hmm. you have to focus on reading and math mm -hmm. for the most part there's more instruction mm -hmm. and that really yeah you know, that cuts out a lot of our extra things that we do mm -hmm. um, with our kids so there's lots of yeah it impacts other sure areas. yeah yeah and the specials be done remotely then if they're only there Oh. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't get that. I said in their specials, that's PE, art, music, things, and, and it might not work in high school because you got band and chorus and everything else. But um, could their specials for our littler ones, and maybe we're talking about two different schedules for two different age groups, mm -hmm. but could their specials be done remotely on the half day in the afternoon if they're there in the morning? Their specials would be remote in the afternoon. They're there in the afternoon and their specials would be remote in the morning. Um, I just think how much we're going to have to cut. I mean, our kids, if they're only going two days a week anyway, let's face it, their specials on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're not. My kid didn't do any specials. <laughs> I mean, PE, yes, because I said, get off sorry. <laughs> but um, art, music, he didn't sing or paint or, you know, color, but that's his yeah. choice. Um, we have a contractual issue if we have right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what if they do them remotely? I don't. Know. And what if PE or recess is not recess? It's PE. I don't know. I just feel like maybe there's. Yeah, but I have to give you there. when you put your teacher mask on. I have to give you your plan time too. Right. Yeah. Sure. So I can't. I can't just dump specials because that's when you get your plan time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. You forgot which mask <laughs> you were wearing. There. <laughs> I'm a teacher. I need my special plan time. <laughs> Uh, so we've talked, I feel like, a lot about high school. I'm going to take it the other end. I have a three-year-old who's going to be doing preschool screening. I have subbed in the preschool classrooms. What, what is maybe a visual of maybe what it will look like? Because when I was in there, it was, let's work on playing together and working together. Mm -hmm. And the opposite of social distancing was the focus. 
That's so how yeah. I, I can't get my mic wrapped around. Well, it. one thing is going to be that we're going to have half of them under this model. We would have half of the bodies in the room, so that takes care of some of it. Do I have the answers for all of the? How do we get away with learning how to play with each other when we're not with each other, or we can't be near <laughs> each other? Those those are all big questions that are still out there. So. The, in my mind, at some point, we just have to say, okay, this this is the plan that we're going with. So then that can allow the teachers in that area to, to give the most attention, hopefully a month's time, to say, okay, how, how is this going to look? Are we going to be able to be closer together for short periods of time when we have mastered keeping our masks on and then we're washing all the time? You know, that's, I think some of those pieces will play into that answer. But is there a perfect answer? I don't think so. Uh, we have a few people asking from home in the chat about uh, <laughs> needs for special education students or okay. students who need to see specific teachers during all parts of their day. How will those students be handled or Correct. what will their procedure be? I don't know that we have all the answers yet, but under the hybrid model, if the kids come back in, uh, the days that they're assigned to come back in, they will see the providers that they need to see. We would like to offer that those students would be able to come in perhaps on the Friday when everybody supposedly is remote, that the students with high needs would be able to come in on those days in person, or if there was a stigma attached to that or families didn't want their child to come in, we could do the remote individualized attention. Um, Friday would give us the most flexibility to catch up from some of the things that were missed during the week. Is there another question from the audience? <laughs> Yes, I have a few suggestions, and I'm sure, again, I've not been in the planning and the discussion element, but my first thought I was writing down is we should, since we're not going to have a normal, like, everybody go and sign their name up for mom or mom or whatever, I think... Sign their think, name up for what? For your mom. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, like, a team of volunteers, that this is their sole responsibility, is helping with whatever the school district needs, and I know there are not a lot of parents who can do this. And fall is not easy for me to be fine. But I do feel like if there was kind of a group that was, that was their sole purpose of volunteering and helping to do whatever the school needs, whether it's temperature checks or individual transportation or, you know, if there was that kind of assembled group, I feel like that might be organized. I don't know. Yeah. And then my other thought was, the churches in the air in the three different towns have large basements. That's for, what I was thinking too. For remote learning, um, like Mansfield has a community center. I know the Methodist Church has done the nice and round table, so I know I don't know what their internet access is. But my thought was, if there was one of these volunteers who was willing to supervise the remote learning, if they didn't have a place to sit, that would assist the church. Hmm. I like that idea because my thought. With the, using the churches is more along the lines of a, a daycare yeah. place. Well, that was, um, when she said daycare, I thought that too. Although you might get free daycare, yeah. but then you also are talking about the population that is in the higher risk category. So I don't know if that would work or not. Yeah, Plus, you have yeah. churches liability insurance. Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. You have licensing and all yeah. that that you have to worry about. So that's probably yeah. a, a good. Yeah, in terms of the volunteers, I like that idea, but we have to think of the legal things as well. Sure. We have to be very careful with that. And right now, they're recommending that we don't let any any extra bodies in the building. Wow. Okay. So that's see, and I was maybe that, that's but maybe yeah. that gets gets lifted at some point, and right. it'll be great to have a, a backup crew ready to right. come in at a moment's notice. Go ahead. Okay. Don't throw stones at me, teachers, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had mentioned at the beginning, like the grade school kids maybe um, coming in all together all day. What if you kept them in their classrooms, but did things to make them get rid of their energy? Because I know you have the kids that are harder to handle and you know everything. I mean, because if you kept them in their classroom all day for lunch and everything, and maybe dismissed even an hour earlier, then they can come every day because there would only be like 20 kids, and that would be way below the 50 kid minimum. I don't know, just a thought. Um, I know, I'm sorry teachers, because I've done daycare in the past, and I've had perfect little kids, and I've had ornery little kids. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, and I know, you know, because I'm in the house with them all the time, I know how it is. And I know it's a lot different when you have 20 kids in the class, or all together. But just the thought there too, I mean, what about just keeping them in the same classroom and setting up times where 
maybe just to run around the building. I don't know, you know what I mean? <laughs> to get some of the energy off. Sure. Basically. Yeah, I'm definitely open to ideas to get all of Because this one morning. thing is going to be hard about the 220 dismissal. I don't know what I'm doing with my daughter. My boss might let me leave work to come get her, but then that's going to mean I'm going to be at work later because I have to make up that time. So I didn't know if maybe, you know, the full day thing, and they all stayed in their classroom, and they just don't socialize with the other classrooms. I don't know. I don't know if that'll work or not. I don't know. Just they didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, just a thought. And I like the idea. I like hearing that, you know, I have three-year-olds, and they're able to keep their mask on, and it's not an issue. We in our classroom. Yeah. And I, I don't know that we could say that's going to be 100% a, 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 you know, a great sign that our kids will be able to do the same, but it's at least encouraging to hear that. I, I would feel, my in my thought process, it wasn't going to be so easy to keep the masks on because, I mean, I'm an adult and I've tried it myself and it's not so easy. Um, but if, if we could get past that and we we're able to get kids to be able to comply with that, the willingness and the ability to do that, I'd feel much better with that number of bodies being in the size classrooms that we have because they won't be six feet apart from each other if we both bring the full enrollment back. So, and you know, of course, add more teachers, that kind of thing. Yeah. But we still have open spots for the, the teachers that we need at this point. So it's, yeah, there's wishes out there and then there's reality sometimes and they don't always match. But yeah, I think you've brought up a lot of good points tonight. Let's um, I just have a question, but I don't know that just because it's out there. Have, have, has there been any talk about one starting school early? Don't, I, starting school early, and yet at Thanksgiving, like oh. colleges are doing starting and that thing, seeing how winter goes, you know, things like that. No. Different kinds of the way, the way that, that it's looking at, at whether a school year will look different. Yeah, we haven't talked about that. I don't know, um, to be honest, I don't know how we could move faster than we are um, and, and get everybody back earlier. Um, amazed that some universities think that they can do that. Um, more power to them. Well, we have talked about We're not starting early. We are. 99.9% of some freshmen we got after Thanksgiving, but we only have two weeks after that. We just have one week of and one week of finals. Mm -hmm. The only reason for us to know that we're we're moving in that direction, and, and a lot of universities is just because our population will go away, and then that way we don't have that majority for our students. It's really a small majority that ever leave once they come to campus, and so um, the way we kind of think we're going to do is like they'll be encouraged, don't keep going home and stuff, because that way when we have that large group leave and then come back, that's our bigger concern. And we will have some <coughs> students that have already told us they wouldn't have somewhere to go, so we maintain a population on campus. Is well over the 10. <laughs> we had we had 500 students in our regular fall to finish off the year after spring break this year. So we need our students didn't leave our students in apartments to leave, but we're just trying to not bring them all back to change in Indiana. But we're going to get that beneficial. We have a, a bit of a, a bump in cases after that happens in the fall. There's a lot of students still there, but that's our biggest concern. It's like that will sit in the for good mm -hmm. uh, But I'm also thinking of loss of academic knowledge. Um, when I when I mean extended school year or trimesters or things like that, you know, catching up for what we've already lost, what they're going to lose, um, because we know that that's that's going to happen. As a teacher, I'm concerned about that. As a mother, I'm even more concerned about that too. Um, of what my children have already lost, of what I'm going to have to reteach not only my children but your children, um, and what that's going to and then if we have another outbreak and we're at home, oh my gosh, for weeks or months, yeah. something, I don't know. Yeah. Nothing's ideal. I think it's, it just helps to consider all the things, everything that you're reading, process a little bit. Like Dale said, think about what that means for our community, where we're located geographically, what our size is, what our community needs are in terms of employment for parents. And then kind of weigh it out. And if you have other suggestions, let us, let us know because I, I don't by any means uh, I didn't go to school to become a COVID-19 um, <laughs> answer giver, you know? So um, we're all just, and I know I really appreciate the tone of the meeting tonight and you understanding that these are these are tough decisions. There's no right answer. Um, we're just hoping to find an answer that we can, we can tolerate and support and then be a positive presence with our kids and send them off with the, with the happiest sending from home into the situation that we have. So.
Are there any other um, online questions that? I have some right here. Okay. She couldn't get through there, so she sent it to me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's one of those. And I think you kind of answered this, but she said, what are parents of children who receive extra help supposed to do when they're not receiving that one-on-one, -on -one? which I think you kind of addressed by possibly coming in on Fridays. Right. Um, but her other question was also, what teacher on remote days will they be present without the distraction of their own families or their own children, like running and sitting on their laps while they're trying to help their child? I think that is her big concern. Yeah, and understood. I, I don't know that there's a great answer for that. Teachers were doing it five days a week before. So if they're doing it one day a week, maybe it's it's a little bit better or it's less, I mean, less time being annoyed. <laughs> um, and as far as the, I'll go back to the, the special needs for any groups. You might be talking about title students, a student with a 504, a student with an IEP. Um, not only do we have those Friday times, but when we talked about the early release on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that also allows for some individual time or small group sessions that could be done remotely for those groups as well. Um, with the hybrid plan, like others have said, child care will be um, an issue, I think, for Schneider level kids. Mm -hmm. um, I think whenever you group kids together, you'll want to try to group kids that go to the same child care daycare provider together um, to limit mixing of those yeah. kids. And then uh, I think that, like in my situation, I can probably work remotely on the days that my kids are going to be home. Um, and then they can go to their regular after school care, but most people don't have my situation. Right. Right. I just had, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I just had a question about masks. Um, and I think you touched on it in the beginning of the purchasing aspect, but will it be something that the school just have? I mean, I know I've seen a lot of parents on Facebook say, we don't even have masks, or are you going to provide masks? I've seen that. A couple different places so I'm wondering is that going to be provided by the school or how does that work? I would think that there's probably going to be some students who want to have their own yeah. because they may have one at home they know that it works and that's great but that's not everybody. Right. We have 2,000 disposable masks on hand already that were just purchased. We have 500 of the Hanes brand cotton mm -hmm. uh, washable masks that are already in house and we have um, Joyce Wells the current mm -hmm. name Joyce Wells just mm -hmm. contacted me yesterday or today and uh, her sewing group is going to be making over 500 um, masks more for the, the children they're trying to get some fun material fabric prints and they're going to bring some prototypes in and we'll, we'll take a look at those but a lot of the ladies in that group have already been making them for Carl mm -hmm. so they're well versed in that they're just trying to get the elastic that's the most comfortable the thinner elastic versus the the wider so yes there's going to be different possibilities like I said at the beginning the whole shield uh, the, yeah the shield thing was a uh, uh, mixed by ISBE today but that's today we'll see what we'll see what tomorrow is um, and make that decision because I know a lot of the teachers at this uh, in this building felt like it was important for mouths to be able to be seen uh, by kids who are learning how to form sounds and letters and words and things like that so we'll we'll do our best to to try to make those things happen. This is just an FYI because I work in a pharmacy to store your mask. You're supposed to put them in paper bags and not plastic bags. So that might be something that, yeah, paper bags breathe, plastic doesn't. So plastic okay. might drain all the germs around. I didn't know if everybody knew that. Or no, I did not. Huh. Well, I just want to say, because of the example we heard from a three year old, and everyone being positive here tonight is that everyone here really needs to go out and be positive about the change you know and whether you really agree but being positive just about this is where we're at this is what's going to be you can disagree but we're going to have to move forward because kids learn from yes, their parents yeah. and if their parents are bad mouthing and saying that it's stupid and you shouldn't be wearing a mask those are the kids that you're going to be struggling with at school. So, for this, for those of you who aren't teachers, I know these of you who are teachers are going to be encouraging it. But just try to. I mean, I, I think that the fact that you guys are here means that you want the best for the kids in this district. And as an old parent at this point, that's the best thing you can do is try to be a community and support the teachers and encourage them to support their teacher. 
I appreciate that. One of the things that we said when we met together as our committee for the first time was um, the 60 page guidance from ISBE came out um, <laughs> right before we had that meeting. And so I stayed late to read all 60 pages, make sure that I was ready for the meeting, and I felt my blood pressure rising. And I said, you know what? You can't do that. You can't walk in there to your group that's going to go out there and work so hard to try to figure out what the best solution is. You can't come in all heightened like that. So we just called it kind of taking your own temperature. Take your temp temperature, realize where we need to be, how we can present it to our families, our neighbors, or you know, the relatives that are asking. So thank you for that. Lindsay, I'll make you our last okay, good, because I have a good one. I just was saying, as a teacher and a parent, we want all of our kids back. We really, really want all of our kids back all the time. And, um, but we also want them to be safe. And, and we want to protect them as much as a teacher. I want to protect all the kids that are in my room and myself. But as a mother, I want to protect my own kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to do whatever we have to do to keep them as safe as we can and provide them with the best education that we can with what we're doing. And everything's changing so rapidly, who knows what it's going to be, you know, in a week, in a month, in two months, you know, but we'll do the best that we can. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, so, reopening at blueridge18.org, that will be activated momentarily, so please send comments there. If you have any uh, suggestions for us, any things that you want us to consider, please feel that you can send it there. Um, spread that word to your people. Um, let's see what else. My, my goal would be to bring something to the board on our July 15th meeting, which means it needs to be coordinated many days before that to get it all in the agenda. So um, the teams are going to, well, our team is meeting again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and then we'll probably meet again before that July board meeting. So please know that our ears are still open. And I'll just close by asking if Ryan, Dale, Francie, Katie, or Paige have anything else for the good of the cause. Doesn't look like it. Is anybody else warm or is it just me? It's warm. I got warm. I think the air is warm. No, we're all okay. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate your time. Have a good night.